The Ten Aspirant Commandments. There's a lot of fuss when elections get close. We hear, start to hear funny things, like uh, I think in 2019, vote of change or change the change, and funny other things that go on. 2023 isn't any different. And the issue that causes tears in the tissue are people want to run, be it not too young or just too cool to be in the Jurassic Park of political dinosaurs, that they ignore the work in the race, which is actually politics. The greatest error is that, that they forget to actually walk the path. And that's kind of common, that's kind of common and it's like getting hit by a packed car. Mm. For me, these are the 10 aspiring commandments in politics for people that want to delve into politics. The first one would be, politics could turn anyone into an animal. Try not to get caught up. The truth is, from experience, people always talk. They have something to say always. As long as you're a politician, you have a target on your back. Uh, but you always have to carry this, and this was what I carried while running for office, is that lions do not bother about the opinion of sheep, and that's the best way to keep it. Two, never let your next move be predicted. The moment you can be predicted, the electorate and even people you're running against can plot anything from anything. And trust us, we have no limits when it comes to political destruction. Three, don't trust anyone. Those who hail you the most are the Judas of the park. For campaigns, keep this in mind. There are always 11 Judas and one Peter. <laughs> and making sure that one Peter is you as the candidate that's running. So best you be denied that privilege to anybody else or annihilated in the game of politics. Four, never get high on the, we are behind you. The houses who say, say kai, the Yorubas who of course, baba or mom you, let's not make it, let's be conscious of the female gender to running for office. I'll tell you, it doesn't translate into votes. Forget all the Facebook likes, you can even have 7 million followers on Facebook. You'll be shocked the number of votes you pull together won't be up to 1,000. Five, keep your eye on the ball always. Aspirations come with distractions. I can tell you why running for office. As a man or a woman, you'll be sought out by a lot of people, the kind of people you thought would never be able to talk to you. Once it starts to get in your, once it gets in your head, let me remind you, after ballot day, your phone that used to ring about 1,000 missed calls in a day, trust me, you'll be looking for who to call you. Six, keep your family and politics completely separated. Now, this is a very key thing, and most people mix it up, which is why most times wives and children who were never part of the aspiration, or husbands and children who were never part of the aspiration, get caught up. Seven, politics is local. One key attribute I learned while running for office was being able to switch from Barack Obama to Adedibu as the need arises. Eight, welcome to the jungle. It will be full of smear campaigns, so train yourself to face a blog report from your husband's side chick. That's if you are a woman. And most hurting of all, you'll be mocked by those closest to you. You know what it is to be, sit on your school group and be told, so now, because you made a common statement, maybe during a conversation, jokingly, you now think you're better than us because you're running for Senate. Who the hell are you? You weren't even the smartest of one of us. Nine, in Nigeria, which is the corruption capital, you have to, as a, you have to, as a new aspirant, be prepared. If you don't have a backyard of dollars, then prepare to be David with a catapult against 21 Goliaths. And that is the reality. Ten, Believe in the best possibilities and prepare for the worst. The ballot day is nothing but a day. Things will go back to the same, whether you win or you don't. These are inspired by things I felt and anticipated while running for the highest legislative office in Nigeria in 2019. Okay. Where is the green light? Okay, if I may have the first reaction. Um, you said something about praise singing and even in, in our everyday life, people that use a lot of SARS, SAR for me, or they call me boss, are people that I'm just naturally very wary of. 
I'm always afraid because it can easily get into your head. Yeah. But these are people that also at the same time, when, they are, when you are not there, they are probably calling you different names. And you know, the Yorubas are very respect conscious. But someone that respects you or uses a respectful word like eh, which is a way of showing okay. respect, you know, it would use that respectful phrase, but it might also be abusing you at the same time. So I'm always very wary and very careful about people that tend to just sing your praise. Uh, mm-hmm. If it gets into your head, I'm telling you, you'll be very disappointed. You know, what, what I, what I, interesting that, I mean, and the Yoruba part, thank you for referencing how it can be like that. But what got to me, what really hit me from your advocacy was the fact that in a like, light bulb moment, it hit me that politics may not be understood by a lot of people. The idea of politics in itself is like a behavior pattern, like who you are. There was so, you said Barack Obama to Adidibu, and I can assure you that that was like a light bulb moment. It, politics is actually an issue of personality. How you can move around, how you can be true to this one, be that to that person. But you know, we, a lot of people in Nigeria especially, look at politics as an ideology. You come in to come and push an agenda. But politics is actually taking on a person to achieve a goal. And as you went through the Ten Commandments of political aspirants, I'm like, for the first time ever, you hit me that you know what I'm doing. Maybe this is why a lot of people are unable to get into politics, or a lot of people that do try on the base of ideology don't get it because politics is you meandering and pushing something. It was just behavior. It hits me. But somehow I feel running to the Ten Commandments, maybe it's my personality. Where is the cup that is half full? That's what I'm. That's what I'm wondering. Reading to. Reading the Ten Commandments you've put out, Kunle, I have this um, flashback as if you've had it, you've had it really bad. No, yeah. I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I've not walked in your shoes, so mm-hmm. I cannot say for sure. Mm-hmm. But reading through it, I'm like, if I'm supposed to come into this journey, mm-hmm. I'm asking myself, where is the cup that is half full? But, but I think you know, where is the light? See what the that reality says, is. Exactly. Yes. How you that is zone, that. that is what now is coming it. from his own experience. He's bringing his experience to the table. But it was relatable. But, mm-hmm. I know it might be, but I'm asking. I'm saying, if I'm a new person yeah. trying to start on this journey, mm. what is in it? From what the Ten Commandments you've, you've told me, the, do, but, the, the, the do's and the don'ts. What then makes me see the do? Okay, there's a, there's a book, <laughs> Love Does Not Win Elections. Yes, Aisha, I shall. So, Aisha, sorry. So, that's oh my God, God, that's an amazing book. That was an amazing if, book. If, if yeah. you've read the book, yeah, uh-huh. you will see that there are, there are lots of um, parallel with the Ooh. things Kunle has yeah. Mm-hmm. shared. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what Kunle is just trying to do is, if you're going to politics, Get these it. are possible pitfalls. These are mm-hmm. possible I would have appreciated a balance of the ten. See, that's it. Of the 10 points he has given, mm-hmm. they might be true, like I said. It's from his own position. Yes. I would have appreciated a situation whereby he balances it out. Boy. Because it truly, it cannot be all so, bad. So the balance, yeah, is that, the balance is that you are an aspirant. Simple for That's me. That was what I took from it. Yeah. That Look, I've decided to run, um, to throw my, my hat in the ring and run this thing because I want to serve my people. Mm-hmm. For me, that's already the half, the half cup full. The next thing now is that these are the things to watch out. That's for you can you make it. it if you're able to to um, scale this one then you will reach the promise yeah land. i love your own about the judas that's the one that i loved because i noticed it, your reaction yes like, mm-hmm. yes that Be- got me. yes that got because me. It's not just in politics. If you can keep this in mind for mm. your life, for life. Out, that look, you, there are more people who are against you in your life than there, there are those for you. You would have um, fewer disappointments yeah. and fewer troubles. Because you, don't get no, yes. for me, I, no, for no, no, no. I, I won't align with that point at all, at all. Like I said, maybe it's just my personality. No, okay. I, of course, it's possible that... <laughs> I, but I don't think... I'm not, I'm not that kind of person that would go ahead with those kind of ten commandments. I think for me, my first commandment would be like, you want to do it? Go for it. You can achieve it. Then I can now begin to num- number two obstacle, number three obstacle, number four another strong point to get you kicking and get you going. But of course, over to you, Kunle. Listening to what you were saying, Ajumai, I think I'd like to just note that the commandments aren't to really scare anybody, but I think people rather be armed for war, mm-hmm. knowing exactly what the war is about, mm. preceding that. 
So now we're going to go to the importance of good education, which cannot be overemphasized. And NGMI, of course, speaks on that after this break. <laughs>